Some people say the number is bigger than 54, but government insists that the number was 54. Yeriko Guta Museveni had said that they would be compensated for the people who lost their lives for the barrier arrangements to be dealt with by the government. However, we're still waiting for confirmation and information to know whether those people actually received the money or not. Ugandans went on social media to say that it is not right for the president to say that these people will be compensated. Instead, they say the president should have had a reconciliation exercise between the police and the army plus Ugandans who lost their lives during that time and to call for calm. However, fortunately, that time passed, and here we are in our country, Uganda, with the elections conclu concluded. Robert Chagulani is saying that these elections were rigged, and there's something absolutely wrong, because according to the results that he has, he won the elections by a landslide, and New York got him seven, he lost. However, we still know that Royal Kogutam Seveni will be swearing in on May 20th. And that means Robert Chagulani has officially lost. As soon as Yuri Kogutam Seveni swears in, that means Robert Chagulani has officially lost. And what next for NUP is the question that we are asking ourselves. What next for NUP? What next? What are they going to do? Now, one of the people who was very vocal about the NUP saga, and that is Stella Nyanzi, is another person who keeps changing her words here and there. Now, if you remember Stella Nyanzi vividly, Stella Nyanzi was the woman who used to don the red barrette and have her hands in a fist, saying that NUP was the best party there is, and there's nothing that can change her mind about NUP. Now, at that time, it wasn't really NUP. At that time, it was people power, and it was just a political slogan, and it was not a political party. Now, when it was just a political slogan, we have people from different political parties who are coming together and saying that since we are from FDC, DP, and all the other political parties, and people power is just a slogan, we can all come up and still be under people power, people, people's power while we're still supporting our political parties. Now, Stella Nyanzi was very vocal when it came to people power and supporting Robert Chagulanyi and saying that Robert Chagulanyi is the best thing that Uganda has ever received. Now, those were her words when she was supporting people power. Now, afterwards... Robert Chagulani registered NUP as a political party. NUP, a political party that has been alive since 2018, but alive but in a coma, was re how do I call it, was brought back to life by Robert Chagulani when he signed papers. Now, of course, the NUP party has a lot of saga undergoing and the fact that the ownership of NUP party has been disputed in court and Robert Chagulani was told at a time by the owners of the NUP political party to bring back the party. Of course, the owner had said that at that time they signed an amount of money for NUP and NUP said, no, that we cannot sign an amount of money. And then he came up later and said, I didn't sell the political party. I saw the stories were immense. There was too much saga going on under the political party called NUP. However, all that gone and passed. NUP in the elections, NUP had its presidential candidate who came second in the just concluded elections 2020 2021. And he has the majority of opposition in parliament, meaning they're going to take the chief whip position and the head of opposition in parliament. Now, coming back to Stella Nyanzi. Now, after NEP party was registered, Stella Nyanzi made sure that she was one of the other vocal people who insulted Robert Chagulani and insulted NEP at the same time. She said she will never leave her political party, FDC, to go to NUP, and she stuck there, and she said that besides that, why would she go to NUP when NUP were homosexuals who got money from homosexuality or homosexuals who are in the U.S. And people said, hey, you said that you are a human rights activist and you're supporting homosexuals. Why is it that you're now condemning NUP to getting money from homosexuals and you make it seem like a bad thing? And she came up and said she knows that NUP is supporting 
and their homosexuality drive because she is a human right fighter for homosexuality or for homosexuals and she knows each and every one of them in Uganda and that means that she knows who are in NUP and who are supporting NUP from the homosexual or LGBT category in Uganda. Now, that is not the only saga that, he, that she is remembered for. Stella Nyanzi was remembered for writing a very gruesome, very above 18, very uh, insulting letter to the president where she insulted not only the president but other president's mother. Now, she wrote it in a tune of a poem. And the poem was nice, really, but the words in it were not for children under the age of 18. It was really grown-up words. It was quite an insultive letter that was sent to the president. Now, that was one of the things that she is going to be remembered for. The other part was Stella Nyanzi also wrote a letter insulting Janet Kataham Seveni and saying words that I cannot bring myself to say on screen right now, but she said it against Janet Kataha Museveni, who is the wife to Yuri Kogutov Museveni, making her the first lady. Everybody went, ah, what is going on? We had gasps and everybody was afraid to even read the letter to their next of kin. However, she will also be remembered for being very, very vocal. She is one of the women in Uganda who, when there was hunger, during the COVID-19 situation, Stella Nyanzi was among the women who walked in the streets of Kampala, banging pans with people behind her. We want food. We want, and they were banging saucepans all over Kampala. Now, that is Stella Nyanzi. Stella Nyanzi is also remembered for being among the women who walked in Kampala without shirts, but with just a bra. And she was making a point after a member, a woman member of parliament was touched in the wrong places and was tripped by a police officer on duty when she was being arrested. And that particular woman member of parliament was in the FDC camp. Now she will be remembered for all those things and more. Now the information that we have on our desk right now today is that Stella Nyanzi is facing the threat of deportation from Kenya after allegedly Kenyans told her to shut up or get out of their country. Why is she in Kenya? Stella Nyanzi, while she was in Uganda, of course, applied for the position of woman member of parliament in Kampala, and she lost terribly to an NUP uh, member of parliament who is now going to sit in. Now, Stella Nyanzi later on, after losing the elections, decided, I'm going to leave Uganda and go to Kenya, and she didn't go in peace. She said that she was being hunted down by government, and she felt like her life was under threat. Her life was under duress. And she said that she will be running to Kenya to ensure that she is protected and she is kept away from the government. Now, the reason why Kenyans allegedly are threatening um, uh, Stella Nyanzi, according to the news item that we're seeing right here on our desk, is because Stella Nyanzi says that she feels that the people who are threatening her are not good people in Kenya, but very evil people. Uh, there was a man, according to Stella Nyanzi, that was beaten to death and burnt in Kenya because he was a homosexual. And this man who was burnt to death was also a refugee. Now, the man who Stella Nyanzi wrote about in Kenya and was burnt to death seemed to not be in the best books of Kenyans because he was a homosexual. And Stella Nyanzi says xenophobia is at its highest in Kenya and Kenyans are hostile and they hate homosexuals. But it's not fair to get to the point where they are burnt to death and their human rights are violated. Now she came and continued saying that she has seen that on social media she has been attacked and other Kenyans have applauded the burning of this particular homosexual, and a number of them are saying that he doesn't deserve to live. Now, she says that what is so wrong with her supporting such a person whose human rights were violated, and why is she being attacked for doing what she did, yet everybody knows that she cannot come back to Uganda because she feels her life 
is under threat. Well, those are the updates that we had for you from, um, from Stella Nyanzi, who is in Kenya as we speak. Now, we'll continue with the other story that has made headlines today, and that is the distribution of the money that was given to Electoral Commission to the different political parties. Now, according to Section 14B of the Political Party and Other Organizations Act, the Electoral Commission is meant to support political parties with a certain amount of money that is given to them for their daily activities and also the election process. Now, during the election process, the Electoral Commission was also given a sum of money that they distributed to political parties. But here's the concern that Asuman Basaliwa raised during a sitting with Electoral Commission and the Parliament while writing the budget for 2021-2022 for the Electoral Commission. Now, the amount that Electoral Commission was asking for was 241 billion Ugandan shillings for this year that we're talking about and that is the next financial year 2020 2021 2022 however they were given 137 million and they're missing 103 they were giving 137 billion forgive me I beg your pardon, 137 billion, and they're missing 103 billion uh, to help in distribution. Now, Asiman Basaliwa has accused the Electoral Commission not once, not twice, not thrice, but he has accused them a number of times for wrongly distributing this money to these political parties. He says, how is it that political parties that have the largest representation in parliament are the ones that get more money than the other political parties? And they have come to the point where the smaller political parties in Uganda do not actually get that money. Now let's look at Asuman Basalira's accusation in accordance to the 2020 election, 2020-2021 elections that have just been concluded. Now, according to Asuman Basaliwa, not all political parties got the money that they were supposed to get. He said Electoral Commission received 15 billion Ugandan shillings to distribute to these political parties that had representation in parliament. So to note, Uganda has a total of 26 registered political parties, some of which I know none of us know about. I'll be going through the list as we continue with this conversation. But then, of course, the ones that we know right now that have representation, we have FTC, we have DP, we have NRM, and then we have, which other political party did I not mention? We have we'll be going through the list, but the ones I know for sure, we have DP, we have NRM, we have FDC, we have NUP, I will not forget NUP, and then we also have, um, we also have, I think Gemma got one or two posts, and then we have the independents who, of course, have the majority of people in the political parties. Now, according to the report that we have, the Electoral Commission managed to cover the facilitation for quarter one and quarter two activities by the political parties during the elections, which totaled up to 12 billion Ugandan shillings. However, of the money that was given, 12 billion Ugandan shillings went to NRM. Now, FDC received 1.5 billion Ugandan shillings. DP received 650 million Ugandan shillings. UPC, which is the other political party that has one or two representation in, in, in parliament this time around, received 350 million Ugandan shillings, while Gemma received 41 million. Ugandan shillings for running their activities. Now, the reason why NUP did not receive any money in the just concluded budget is that they were not part of the political parties and they have just been registered. And now that they are in parliament, they will receive this money. Now, let's go back to the calculations. Out of 15 billion Ugandan shillings that was given to Electoral Commission, 12 billion went to the National Resistance Movement. And here's the argument. NRM already has resources. They are the sitting government, which means they already have resources. So 
Asman Basaliwa and other members of parliament say it is unfair for electoral commission to distribute money to parties such as NRM, which already has resources, which already has a lot of money in their hands, to the point that they give out money in sacks and bribe people during the elections, as much money as 12 billion, for example, and other political parties such as FTC getting 1.5, getting 650 million for Democratic Party, 350 million for um, for UPC and 41 million for Gemma. They're saying that's quite unfair and the Electoral Commission needs to look at this process. And it is also very unfair that there are other political parties that are actually missing the money completely and yet they need to be helped, especially during the political season. We saw that these elections that were just concluded were e-elections, electronic elections, although they did not entirely uh, happen as electronic, the main plan was that these elections will be e-elections. And that means people would actually be on radios and TVs to talk about their manifestos. However, later on we saw that Electoral Commission decided that we shall do half-half. We shall do half uh, in the field, half rallies, and half e. However, uh, parties like NUP, complained that they were being stopped from speaking on radios and TVs, and that was unfair because this election was tagged an e-election. And when President Seven spoke, on the other hand, he was given a platform where all media houses were expected to show Seveny being on TV and addressing the nation. And of course, Robert Chagulani said there was a problem because they could not differentiate between Yuriko Gutem Seveni, the candidate, and Yuriko Gutem Seveni, the president. And they said on that note, he got platform and spoke and got a time to campaign, yet the others did not get the same platform. And they said these elections were generally unfair and UCC did not help with making it fair enough because it was the body that was responsible for ensuring that every candidate got the same amount of time when it came to the platforms on television, radios, and newspapers. Now, in response, Justice Simon Biabakama explained to Asman Basaliwa and the members of parliament that there is nothing that he, as the chairperson of Electoral Commission, can do in regard to the distribution of the money that is questioned by these members of parliament. And the reason why he said that is that Section 14 of the Political Party and Other Organizations Act states that they will give money in accordance to the political parties that are seated in that house, the number of the representatives of that particular political party. And they said there's nothing they can do because they are following the law. So unless the law is changed, there's nothing that Electoral Commission can do. Now I'd like to ask for your view as a person who is watching STV right now on all your social media platforms. What do you think about the fact that Electoral Commission is saying it is the law and they're asking themselves what is there for us to do aside from follow the law? Should the law be changed? Should it be amended? We've seen the Constitution has been amended a number of times. Should these people sit and amend the Constitution in order for it to be fair? We've sat here on the screen before, me, Simon Chris, and also uh, Adam, and we've spoken about a number of issues. And some of these issues have been the fact that it is unfair for political parties such as NRM, which already has funding, to be the one to receive the largest share when it came to the money distributed to these political parties. So unless, according to Electoral Commission, this amount, this, this article, Section 14B of the Constitution or of the Act of the Political Party and other organization is changed, there's nothing absolutely that he can do. Let's look at the political parties that we have in our country, Uganda. The list of political parties that we have in our country, Uganda. Now, when we look at only the active political parties in Uganda, we have Alliance for National Transformation, that is A&T, and which is led by Mugisha Muntu. 
And then we have parties like the Conservative Party. The Conservative Party, CP, which for me is not as active as this uh, particular article claims that it is. We have Democratic Party, of course, the DP, which is quite active. And Nobad Mao had said that if he doesn't get a number of representatives in parliament that he wanted, he'd step down as the chairman of DP. And now he came back and said, mm -mm, that what I said, I am not doing it, but civil. I am coming back and I'm still being the chairman and I will stand as the president next time, next time uh, the Democratic Party stands. And then we have the Ecological Party of Uganda, which for me is also not as active. We have Forum for Democratic Change, of course, FDC, which has been the strongest opposition party in Uganda. But now NUP has taken over the that particular part of being the strongest political party in Uganda. We have Forum for Integrity and Leadership, which is also not as active. We have Green Partisan Party, GPP, which is also not as active. We have Justice Forum, and that is Gemma, which, which is quite active. Gemma decided that they would have a coalition with NUP, which they did. And of course, their umbrella changed colors from white and blue to red and white. And of course, there was a blue somewhere there when Gemma decided to join uh, NUP in, politi in politicking in this 2020-2021 elections. And then the agreement was that Gemma would not place the same politicians in the position that NUP has. And they said that truthfully, there was nothing that could be done about that game because we saw even during the elections, Gemma fronted some people in the same position as NUP because they say NUP was being unfair in choosing the candidates who would stand in those positions. Politicking in Uganda, ladies and gentlemen, too many things happen, huh? From one part of agreement to the other part of no agreement to the part that the opposition has failed to form a coalition from time immemorial to debt. Let's go ahead with the list. We have Liberal Democratic Transparency Party, which for me is not as active. We have National Convention for Democracy, National Peasants Party. Now, all those parties are there in our country, but truthfully, some of them are not as active as they're thought to be. We have the National Resistance Movement, of course, being the most active political party. And, of course, the party that is sitting right now and has sat for a very long time, making 43 years. We have National Unity Platform, which is the new baby party in our country. We have People's Progress Party. People's Progress Party is another party that they say is active, but for me, I'm not sure it's that active. We have Uganda Patriotic Movement, Uganda People's Congress, that's UPC, which is active, and all the other political parties, ladies and gentlemen. Whew, I'm going to run out of breath if I have to go through every name of political party on my list. But hey, you can find all that on any platform on internet. We call it Uncle Google. Just find them and you're going to find the political parties in Uganda and you will know the active ones. Now, 26 political parties and the other defunct political parties in our country. How should that money be distributed? They're asking for 241 billion Ugandan shillings. However, they have been given 137 and we have 103, which still has not been budgeted for because of the fact that it has not been given. Let's slow up a little bit. Now, how should that money be distributed? Should it be distributed to the point where all political parties get that money, especially the active ones, regardless of whether they have representation in parliament or not? Because, hey, it's not their fault that they were not voted into parliament in 2020, 2021. It's not their fault. So should they be given that money, or should we only look at the parties that are seated in parliament right now? Okay. So we're looking at the parties that are seated in parliament right now. How should that money be distributed? Should it be distributed equally to all the political parties who are in parliament as we speak? Or should we continue with the telltale of NRM being the party with most representatives in parliament and they should get more money? Or how should we do it is the question that I am asking you. Of course, we're not going to do calls right now on that questioning, but all you have to do is call out or is it text us on our social media platforms. That is Facebook, STV Uganda, Instagram, STV Uganda, Twitter, and also YouTube where we're streaming live right now for those who are unable to watch us on TV.
Now, speaking of NRM being the party with the biggest representation today, Yoriko Gotem Seveni will be officially officiating the Changkwanzi meeting of the members of parliament who have just been elected on the NRM camp. Kasula Lumumba, I beg your pardon, has said that the NRM party will only have members of parliament or LT5 chairman. Actually, all members who were elected on the NRM ticket will be present in the Chankwanzi camp, except those who are leaving, those members of parliament or those members of NRM, not members of parliament alone, but members of NRM who were unable to go through this time and are not going to sit in the 11th August House. Now, there was a fury that was wrested from those people. And they're saying, why is it that we can't attend? You know what happens, right? When you go to Chankwanzi, there's pocket money that is given to you. And these members of parliament, however, say that we're supposed to be part of this process even if we were not voted back. And Kasula Lumumba says, mm -mm, you're not going to be part of the process because we are trying to teach new ideologies and we're trying to discuss the manifesto of the NRM that is 2021, 20, 2026 20, to the new members of parliament who have just been voted in. So there's no use for you to be in Shankwanzi. Well, President Seveni will be present today and it has been confirmed that regardless of the fact that one of the most touching issues right now in NRM is the Speaker of Parliament uh, position that is being fought on by Rebecca Kadaga and Olanya. Now, we know that this is one of the most touchy-touchy issues in NRM. However, NRM says they are not going to discuss these issues at all. So in Parliament, they are not going to discuss it whatsoever. They will be discussing other things other than the Speaker of Parliament. And they're saying that will be discussed at a later date. Remember, Yerika Gutten 7 is saying precisely that the campaign for the speakership position is to stop because he's seeing that it is causing a rift in the NRM party and NRM leadership and he's saying it's not going to happen regardless of what they say. So he has stopped them from campaigning and he says until the Central Executive Committee of NRM decides who will be fronted as the Speaker of Parliament, these people need to stop campaigning and wait for the decision of CEC. I'm wondering, what will NRM do? Will they have a primary to elect the speaker or will they just sit in a team and decide? Rebecca Kadaga has been there for 10 years. That's too long. Let's have Jacob Bologna take over the mantle and then we'll see the process. Or will they have a sit down and say, uh, Jacob Bologna and those Italian support like Rebecca Kadaga. If we put him there, that only means that we may not get the Speaker of Parliament because for the first time in history, we are seeing that members of opposition are now fronting their candidates, something that was not done before. So they are now also fronting their candidates and they're saying that whether they want it or not, they're also going to participate in the speakership position. Now, if a 30 allows, I'd like us to look at that story where Museveni is planning to officiate the new NRM MPs retreat at Chankwanzi to come out, discuss a little bit about the Speaker of Parliament position and the opposition members of Parliament also saying they're going to front their candidate and then pick up from there with the corruption in the judiciary and how they are planning to deal with it. Katichitu tesa biti namba wuchaba baka wa parliament abaita muku kada ya NRM bagenda mulisirika ichiankwanzi nga muku okira kooni saba wandisi wa NRM honarebo Justin Kasuliri Mumba atutekeze za kubichi buli jobi bakora. The NRM party to have the official opening of the retreat for the newly elected members of parliament, the MP elect for the 11th parliament. Na kurencha, President Wegwanga Lino, Eranga Yichiamani wa NRM, wakugula wulu siri kalu no mbotongole, Eranga Insonga, Izenja wulu za kwanjibwa. And uh, His Excellency Yuri Kaguta Museven, the National Chairman, 
will preside over that function. Lumumba Gamba, or Vanora President Museveni, or Kugura Huru City Karuno, or Bakukuba Ganyi Birozo, Konsongezi Kwata, Kukula Kuranya Uganda, Ko Ne Africa, or Kutuali Zawamo. After the official opening, we shall go deeper into ideology and uh, the chair of the national chairman, His Excellency Rikakuta Museven. And then we shall also look at issues to do with the, how to deal with the basic needs, especially of the most vulnerable people. The basic needs, this is food, clothing, shelter, medical and security. Ulusirika, luwa kugwa nge na kuzo mweza makumi ya bili mumu endao mwezi guno, ngaluge ndere duamu wa wabaka wa NRM okwe manya, okutende ke wakubutia, webana asobora, okusakira e guanga, ko ni nsonge ndara nyingi. Nzei Arafat Msoke, Ace TV. There you go. That story ran in our news bulletin yesterday, and that is Selector Yen Jaulo that was anchored by Hasif Sechiwonga. An amazing bulletin. That is, if you miss, you need to catch it today at 6.45 p.m. Same time, same place, and you will get the best of the news that is happening in the country. We don't miss any article that you see everywhere. We have it in our news. Now, you remember when Yori Kogutam Seveni called Rebecca Kadaga and told her, stop telling people that you kept me in power because with or without you I would still be in power. Now he warned Rebecca Kadaga uh, about going around and saying that he she is the reason why Yuriko Gutem Seveni is still in power. Do you remember when we had Rebecca Kadaga right on this set seated here with an interviewer and she was saying the same exact words that she's the one that is still keeping Yuriko Gutem Seveni in power. Well, Yuriko Gutem Seveni disputed those claims and said no you're not atewe fugenyabo because that is not what is going on and that is not the narrative. Now, Olanya and Rebecca Kadaga is a competition that everybody has their eyes put on NRM and they're wondering what next for NRM. Now, Rebecca Kadaga has held a smoking gun on their head and she's telling them, look, I have the support of not only the NRM camp but of also the opposition. That means if you put me there, there's no question over the fact that I will win. While launching her bid in Speak Resort, Munyonya, Rebecca Kadaga had support from the different political parties. NUP was present right there in the, the, the launch of Rebecca Kadaga's speakership bid. Now, later on, however, uh, NUP decided we're going to choose our own candidate, but that's besides the point. Let's come back to the competition. Olanya says that Rebecca Kadaga is accusing him of being weak and calling her all the time when there's a debate in parliament that he feels that like he cannot handle. Olanya says it's not true. And Olanya says if Rebecca Kadaga says he has, she has all the support that she claims to have, why is it that she's still campaigning? Well, this competition got dirty. The water got dirty and mucky and everybody was throwing insults and claims until Yorika Gutem Seveni said enough is enough. Keep quiet. We'll deal with this on the big people's table. You know, they say when adults are speaking, the children need to keep quiet. And Seveni said, we'll deal with this on the dining table of adults. Now, you young children, keep quiet. Let's deal with that and then we'll come back to you to tell you what decision we have made. And us in the public, us in the newsroom are waiting to listen to what the final result is going to be. Well, that is it for the Chankwanzi retreat that is happening today where Yuri Kogetem Seveni will be present. Now let's move forward to our last story before we go for a break and watch uh, and watch Global Exploration by Carol, where we learn new things every other time it comes on air. And for me, that is one of the segments that I enjoy fully, even when I sit right here on the set. I watch it and I enjoy it and I have fun with it, and I hope you to have fun with it. However, later on, we'll, we will be having a guest who will be coming in to tell us details about Mufti Menx coming to Uganda. Now for the Muslims who have today fasted for their third day of Ramadan, I am calling upon you to join a Mufti Menx who will be at Pearl of Africa Hotel. And of course, you know Mufti Menx's teaching. They're very inspirational. And they come at a time when we actually need them because we are in the COVID-19 pandemic. People want 
don't have money to even buy iftar and dako for themselves and their families. People are at a time when they've lost their loved ones to the pandemic and to also the just concluded election. So there's a lot of sadness, there's a lot of sorrow, there's a lot of hunger, there's a lot of... The, the, the situation is not as good. So Mufti Menk is coming, and you know how his messages are uplifting, and hopefully you will get a word or two from Mufti Menk and STV, which is an official partner to the coming of Mufti Menk, will be able to bring you Mufti Menk from the time he arrives at the airport to the time that he leaves right here live on STV, and you should not touch your screen when Mufti Menk comes, and of course, we'll have an exclusive interview with Mufti Menk only on STV. TV. Now we'll have one of the organizers come here, the chairperson of the organizing committee, who of course will be telling us the information about the coming of Mufti Meng. Now let's go back to the conversation that we're having. And this time we're looking at a change of uniforms or the insisting of uniforms in the Judiciary Committee. Now, we remember when police had a change in uniform. Until today, people are not satisfied with the color of the uniform that was given to the traffic police. Now, police gave the same reason for the change of uniforms. And they said they need the change of un uniforms to come with the end of corruption in police. The uniform was changed from white, which was instated during the 2017 Chogam, to brown, which, was, which is now inserted to a color that looks like every other policeman. However, there's a difference. Eh? There's a white belt and there's a white guard down on their socks to protect them from dirty water spoiling or entering their shoes. They also have a cap, white and black, and Ugandans complained about that uniform for a very long time. And every time they see a traffic officer on the road, they go, huh, he's a traffic officer, not a regular policeman. Okay, we can deal with a change in uniform. And I, I think we're now getting used to seeing khaki instead of white, but still, we cannot get rid of the fact that they looked quite nice with the white. They looked different, they stood out. And for many Ugandans, the aspect of standing out is what made sense to them. Because they're like, when that white uniform stood 100 miles and you were coming at a certain speed that was prohibited on the road, you could actually spot it and go like, oh, woo you, let me reduce the speed. But now you cannot, and you are definitely caught when you're on the wrong because you don't spot these people while they're standing. However, now we're looking at the judiciary, whereby there's also a change in uniform. Now, Pius Bigirimana, the judiciary permanent secretary, has communicated in saying that they're going to have a uniform that is given to all members of the judiciary, the staff and the other members who are also uh, part of the judiciary. Now, according to him, we're looking at different uniforms for different people. Now, the clerk and other staff will also have a uniform, three pairs for each clerk, and the other staff, the drivers and all the others, will have a set of three uniforms each. And then the magistrates will maintain their gowns, but it will be compulsory for every person in the magistrates to put on their guns at all times, their gowns at all times. And then, of course, the judiciary will be putting on their robes, and that is how the uniforms will be broken down. Now, in total... ...a staff... And they will receive three sets of uniforms. So 300 and 550 members of the staff who will be receiving these uniforms. And they say that this becomes part of the process to fight uh, corruption in judiciary. We remember that according to information that was circulated in media, three members of the staff were dismissed from the judiciary because of corruption and 15 of those were interdicted while 30 of those are on reprimand due to corruption. And we also know that in 2020, the, anti the Judiciary Anti-Corruption Task Force emphasized that uniforms for all members of judiciary, including the drivers, would help in fighting against corruption in the judiciary. Cases have been reported of corruption in the judiciary. And among those cases is the distortion of cases, the loss of files, the alteration and removal of information. And how does that happen? So I go to court and I tip these people. And then tipping them is not cheap. It's very expensive. Now they're tipped. Some money is given to them. 
and then say there's an information in the file that says ABCD, that file will be retyped and that information will be removed. And in some instances, the distortion of cases have also happened and this happens especially when there's a case between a rich person and a poor person. You see that, for example, there's a land issue between a rich person and a poor person. Now what happens is that the rich person will pay a certain amount of money and the information will either be distort distorted or the file will disappear out of a blue or there will be the alteration and removal of information and then the case will be thrown out and this person will lose. Yet, truth be told, it is the poor person that deserves to have won the case. So all those things are happening, and hopefully, according to Pius Bigirimana, we are seeing that the change in uniforms will help in fighting corruption. Now, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to take a short break.